Good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. I'm Tom Dorsey, and today we're going to be talking about are you a Tigger or are you an Eeyore? I don't know who comes up with these show titles, but it wasn't me. And I couldn't think of a better guest to have on. And, and so what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about, you know, the adaptation basically, right? Is how do you adapt and are, do you jump on opportunities like Tigger would? Or are you going to play it more reserved and conservative and, uh, you know, safe like Eeyore would, right? And so, and I tell you what, I got, I, I couldn't get a better guest to, to come on because this guy is a Tigger. No doubt about it, he's a Tigger. But when you meet him and when you talk to him, you might think he's an Eeyore because, you know, he practices that art of war. He, he operates through deception, and that's J.R. Luna. Welcome, J.R. Hey, thanks for having me, Tom. JR is at Concourse uh, Motors and actually Asian Auto Tech and opening up another location, talking about Tiggers, uh, Airport Automotive out of sunny and warm Ventura, California. <laughs> He's a local. Right. And so, um, and what we're going to be doing today, you know, we're live on Facebook, but we'd love to get you over. If you're not in already, you can log in over at autovitals.com slash DSTR. Uh, because, you know, as we've changed the show format a little bit, and in the front half, we're going to be talking with JR about kind of why, you know, why uh, and, it, you know, is it important to not only be, you know, able to adapt to circumstances, right, which is a perfect segue into kind of what's happening with this pandemic and stuff, but more importantly, how to get on those opportunities early and often and leverage them uh, to meet your goals, whether it's shop operation or other life goals that you have, right? You got to make hay while the sun is shining, like my grandfather used to love to say to me. And that's what a Tigger would do. And so we're going to be talking about that. And in the second half of the hour, we're going to go, you know, we won't be live on Facebook anymore, but we're still going to be open in this, in this Zoom room. And again, it's autovitals.com slash DSTR. And in there, we're going to welcome in uh, John Long and Devin Kelly are back. And they're going to be talking to us kind of about the how. Because if you follow the show, you know that both of those Tiggers, they've made some huge changes and in very innovative changes in their process and in their shop operation and even in their roles inside of the uh, shop when they transition to be a digital shop and as they've kind of adapted to the changing marketplace even before COVID and now with this COVID stuff on us how is it going to change because you know people are getting fired up right we're getting ready to open the country back up and everybody that I've been talking to I was just on a meeting with Meineke shout out to John Price who's in the audience or at least he said, told me he was going to be uh there's there's opportunity there's excitement there is you know that desire to get out and innovate and adapt like American small businessmen that and women that we are. Uh, so, so make sure you get logged in on there so you catch the second half. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be the nuts and bolts on how these guys have made these adaptations. Uh, and it's coming right from the horse's mouth. You don't want to miss it because they're both extremely successful. So uh, after this long-winded intro, let's get right into it with JR. Welcome, JR. You know, really appreciate it. How's things been going for you over the last month or so? You know, they haven't been terrible. We, we, we've been hanging in there pretty good. Um, we're down about 20% in business. Um, but, um, you know, our team okay. is solid and, and uh, we've been, one of the realizations is that we've been working 150% to get 80% of what we used to do. And perhaps it's one of the biggest realizations that now we've got to work harder. And, and, and I'm a little upset that it took this to find that our that we had another gear, you know, that we could have been doing more all along, um, and that's um, you know we're making the phone calls, we're doing a lot of marketing, we're going to do Facebook Live videos, we're promoting the community, we're we're texting and emailing uh, twice as frequent as we used to, and and that's helping us out. But in the now, but in doing that, I was like, "Well, crap! Maybe we could have been doing this all along and been even busier, and 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 prevented some of the slower weeks and some of the dips in the stats and things like that." So, like I said, I'm a little upset at myself that 
as of now, I'm working as much as I used to work when I opened the shop, you know, 13 years ago. Like, you know, 12 hour days, going home and doing something, researching, doing whatever I can to promote the business. And yet I know that it's like crap. Well, two months ago I was, you know, coming home at five, six, and uh, you know, I'm just chilling out with the fam and putting my feet up. And I mean, I did work some nights, but now I'm working every night. Yeah. Doing accounting, doing loan stuff, doing, you know, and I've done more accounting. My wife and I have done more accounting like in the last three weeks than we've had in years. So it's like <laughs> we're finding things that we never found before. So there's there's a lot to be said to rev up your engines. And uh, like I said, I'm a little upset that it took this to realize that you had another gear. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are coming to that realization. And so it's more important than ever as we've been having to kind of think outside of the box and adapt and kind of change some of the way we do business and it's being successful, right? It's carrying you through and it's working because what that is, those are best practices. And, right. and so it's critical that you continue those best practices once we come out of this thing, because exactly what JR just said, you don't want that to happen to you to think to yourself, wow, I could have had a 25, 30%, 40% greater year from a net revenue perspective. If I just would have stayed in the saddle, if I just would have stayed hungry, right? And, and you're right. You know, it, it, it is kind of a shame, but hey, it's a good thing, right? It's, and, and you should shake the tree once a year, maybe once a quarter, depending on your operation, just to get that wake up call, even be, you know, yeah, you're right. Don't, don't, you know, hopefully it doesn't have to be a pandemic or some worldwide catastrophe that gets you to, to take that action or to think in those terms. But if you set yourself up with a regular reflection and, and, you know, kind of self, uh, you know, examination there of your business and audit, if you will, on a regular basis to refire yourself up and stay, you know, hungry and after it. Because here's the other thing is what people are realizing is not just in our space, right? It's not just an automotive. Uh, it's across the board. It's people are starting to take their college classes and school classes remote. That's a new thing, really. Uh, and a lot of them are probably questioning themselves, why do I get on the bus and why do I do these things when I'm actually can focus better? You know, I mean, that happens to me when I work from home, I tend to work, you know, 15 hours go by and I haven't even had breakfast yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you just get focused and hammered out. And, and so this is happening and people are seeing these opportunities in different ways to approach the market and do business because of this situation. And it's really, why, why would you go back to the old way? right? Why would you go back if it's successful for you to do these things? If it, if it brings in new customers to your business because you're offering some after hours pickup or no touch type stuff or some different services now, ramp them up, right? Put them on steroids, keep doing it and stay hungry. Dude, that's, a, that's an awesome point, JR, because I think a lot of people are in your shoes. You know, they realize that you can be a Tigger or you can be an Eeyore. You can you can be driving the bus or you can be getting run over by the bus. It's up to you. Well, yeah, definitely. And, 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 you know, the good enough, the average where we're like, yeah. Oh man, you know, I, you know, we, we did X amount. That's, that's pretty good. That's good enough. We'll pay our bills and make a little money. That good enough is seductive. You know, it's sexy. It's all mm -hmm. around you. It's a warm, fuzzy feeling that is like, Oh man, I, I beat my break even this week. And uh, that's, that's pretty good. And I, and I think a lot of us, at least for me, it could, uh, you know, a time to get content and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the money you're making and the things you're, you're doing. However, you don't want to get content in that because the worst part, if you don't change, is not that you're not going to make money. It's more than that. It's that you're teaching your kids and your family that good enough is good enough, right? Amen. You're teaching the staff that being average is fine. That, uh, that, you know, you just make enough money to get by and you have a pretty good life. And that's just not what a Tigger does, right? That's just tigger, not what a Tigger does. <laughs> a, a Tigger cultivates leaders and makes better parents and makes better members of the community and makes people earn money and be of value. Yeah. A Tigger makes so much money that gives stuff away, right? That helps the poor, that helps the schools, that helps the small league, the little league teams and uh, that in this times can buy gift cards and give things away and help that family that needs it. Like that's what a Tigger does. It's not that he wants to hoard all the money for himself, but he just... 
I, I'm doing it to show everybody else that you can do it. I'm doing it so you can be a better parent. I'm doing it so you can be a better leader and a member of society and all those things that you need to do. And that's, that's really why I, I, that what, that's what drives me, helping others, making others better, making myself better. Oh, yeah. Because as a leader, if I'm not better, then who's going to follow me? I got to be the guy up front, right? I got to be the better of the team so I can drive people along, you know, bring them up. And cultivating our own is just uh, what a tigger does. Exactly. Not only take an opportunity and, yeah, I want to buy more shops, sure, I want to make more money, of course. But at the end of the day, your legacy, what you leave behind, what you're known for, it's more than money. It's more than profits. It's, it's, it's a way of life, right? It's being a ticker. So. Yeah, because the average doesn't carry you through the pandemic, right? Average yeah. doesn't carry you through. And I'll no, tell you what. It, it, it's really easy to be good and, or average at good times, right? Almost anybody can do yes. it. But to be good in bad times, man, that takes, that takes skill and craft and uh, determination and sheer power. Yes, uh, yes. So, yeah. Yes, exactly. Because, hey, this thing's going to pass. Something else is going to happen. I mean, shit, where we're at, you know, we get the floods and the fires and, you know, where folks in the Midwest get the tornadoes and the other, you know, all the natural disasters that come and, you know, whatever, economic downturns and you know, all that stuff's in the future. And, and exactly that is that you have to be on top of your game each and every day because that's what carries you through the rough spots. That's what carries you through. And like you said, maybe you've got some nest egg and some stuff saved up. Maybe you've done, you know, you went out and spread that Tigger love around enough in the community to where now that community is supporting you when the times turn, right? And you got the, you're the guy with the line of cars in the parking lot. And because, because people remember that and, and you paid it forward and now here it comes back to you, right? Uh, you got to give to receive. And, and, and just like, you know, I couldn't have said it and I'm not going to try to say it any better is that, you know, once you get out there and it's not about hoarding it and, and showing off and, and be it, you know, getting it all for yourself. It's about, it enables you to do more uh, and, and what's important to you. And, and GR, I've known you a long time, buddy. And I remember the first time you came out to Auto Vitals and you brought your whole crew with you to a workshop, right? And, and, and that's the first impression I've had of JR and it's, and it's only strengthened since then is that this guy is a mentor. This guy gets out of bed every single day and, and, and thinks the first thing about how do I improve the lives of my team? How do I improve the lives of my customer? And then, you know, how do I improve my business and, and my family? And, and, and you know, it, like you said, it, it takes that mentality each and every day you're strapping your boots on to define who the true leaders are. And, and, and those true leaders, they lead through all times, thick and thin, right? That's right. That's absolutely right. And so what do you do to, to, to give yourself that reality check? How do you other, okay, so let me put it this way. It, it got forced on you through the pandemic, but now thinking it through and into the future, how do you ensure that you don't kind of fall back into that rut? Well, definitely scratching off and, and making a lot of notes on, on, on some of the processes that I thought that were bulletproof and that we were doing good, that they were strong. And now I know that they were done only when things were low, you know, like, oh yeah, we're slow. So bring out the book. Let's see what we can do. Well, we got to forecast that more and, and we got to stay on top of the things that uh, before, before it happens. Yeah. Um, this callback deal, the care calls that we call them, they're awesome. Like people love them. And I, I can see that th those are some of the things that are going to stay in place. Uh, uh, making those care calls from people that we haven't seen in a while. Um, we did some of them, but to be frankly honest, we're not as diligent as we used to be, uh, or not as we used to be, as we should be. Um, some of the processes, the, setting the expectations, we have less cars now. So our average RO has jumped $300 in the last three weeks uh, because we just had a little more time to be at ease with the customer and, and, mm -hmm. and have a real conversation and, and empathize with them what they're going through. And, uh, and I've been doing some pickup and delivery myself. And uh, if we're shorthanded, I'll, I'll we'll deliver a car. And one of the things that I used to think is that, well, I, I, I kind of knew this, but it, it, it got emphasized even more that we don't just fix cars. We take grandma to dialysis. You know, we take that kid to 
uh, I, we fixed the car. Was, uh, this mother had a um, a son with brain with a brain tumor, and the lady had a sprinter, and uh, she brought it into the shop, and uh, it needed a, a high injection, a high pressure fuel injection pump. We were able to get it, and we were able to fix it the same day. And uh, we told, uh, you know, talking to the lady, I told her, well, you actually, I didn't think we we're going to find this part today because it's very, it's, it's not something very common. And she said, I knew it was going to happen because God is always looking out for my son. And I was just like, wow, like what? Like, like we're not just fixing a truck here. You know, we're, we're taking people to, to places, you know, we're, 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 we're taking grandma to dialysis. We're taking this kid to get a MRI in his brain. Yep. Um, some people that are retired or semi-retired, that's their security blanket that their car can start every morning, you know, that they just can do things. Yep. And, uh, it's like I said, it's more than fixing cars. We're, you're, you're a freedom people. merchant. That's what you are. You're a freedom merchant, freedom yeah. and security merchant, right? You, you, you trade in folks ability to yes, have that security, but also to enjoy freedom, to be able to go where they want, when they want safely and on time right and that is a huge and when you miss that in a you know all of a sudden because that's the other thing that's kind of happening right now boy does that come back front and center and it's like we were talking about last week you know when this thing blows over you guys have got to be prepared because it you know it's coming people are going to want to get the heck away from the house and go on the longest road trip they can plan and everybody's headed for yellowstone or whatever and so you need to be prepared and when do you get prepared well you get prepared right now you need to be communicating that information now, right? You need to stack the deck early so that, you know, when that dam opens, hey, here it comes. And then again, you know, with the bulletproof processes in place, you're able to handle uh, that return to, you know, civilized business as it were, right? Because <laughs> it's a, you know, and, and, you know, to your point too, JR, I, you know, I go through data, all day, right? And I and I'm and I'm digging into this stuff, and 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 it's amazing. You can see the Tiggers and the Eors because the data doesn't lie. And there's shops that are out there, forty percent, fifty percent drop in revenue. You know what? Fifty percent increase in inspection rate or inspection scent rate all of a sudden because they, like Jr. said, they they learned they had an epiphany. We better start doing something different because this is this ain't working. And then guess what? Car counts down, revenues up. You know, car counts down in some cases, 40, 50% revenue is up 20, 30% in some cases. And, and is it, is it because people are buying more because of this thing? Heck no. It's because you're following best practices that you should have been doing from day one. That's right. Yeah. You're going up to, to bat with all the intention, you know, with uh, really focused. It's not just like, well, I'm going to have 10 pitches today, so I'm going to hit one. Yeah. Now it's like, no, I'm going to only have three. So I, I better focus and do the best that I can. Um, you know, the days of sending an inspection without being um, uh, edited, that, that, that's just not going to fly. You, you're not going to work for somebody very long if you, if you keep doing that. You know, it's, it's got to be 100% because that, there's just not enough out there for, uh, to keep us alive right now. So we we got to do everything that we can. Each From the technicians time. to the writers to the porters to uh, to marketing person to all of it, it's gotta be it's on point. Like, bring your finest. You know, today is the day, every day, every day. See, that's Jr's commitment right there, right? That's how Jr's gonna roll out of this pandemic and into the future, right? Is 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 making a commitment to himself that he's gonna stay on top of his best practices. He's not gonna let him slack. He, and, and you know what? You're going to hold each other accountable. He's going to hold his crew accountable and his crew is going to hold him accountable, right? And together, guess what's going to happen is they're going to put up numbers and they're going to achieve goals that they didn't even think possible two, three years ago, right? Because this guy's on fire and everybody in this audience and everybody out there in this market right now is on fire if you want to be. And the difference is you jump on it like Tigger because that's what Tigger would do, right? Enthusiasm, you know, and maybe he don't think much about it, but he just leaps, you know, he's froggy. He likes to jump. <laughs> and, you know, but, but you know what? What happens is that opportunity is accelerating away from you if you think about it too much and you want to find yourself in the Eeyore. So you probably want to find the center, right? You want to find a little bit of the center there. Uh, and you want to continue to just lead by that example because because like what JR said, it's infectious. The crew is going to pick up on that and they're going to replicate that. They're going to, they're, they're going to, they're going to act like you. And if you act successful, they're going to act successful and then success follows. Right. 
Um, hey, you know, I want to give a shout out to uh, Ben Gatewood. Great, you know, quote that he chatted in real quick. It's a Martin Luther King quote, but it's so pertinent to what we're talking about is that, you know, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy, right? And that, that right there is the mantra for, for you know, our, our industry right now uh, is, you know, you can pick a side and you should be on the side of leading, right? Um, and also Cindy Reason, uh, you know, she got, got some great input and I want to share this, is that she's doing all the courtesy shuttle driving and found that the customers really appreciate it. They open up to her uh, about themselves and more importantly about their experience with the, with the shop right with her shop. So, so what a great way to kind of have that off the record, private bonding a little bit with some customers and get some insights that you might not have been able to catch in your surveys or in your observations or in your reports from the crew. Right. But now you get, you know, and people open up a little bit when they're relaxed and you know, gosh, you think I'm in the Uber or something. Um, they feel comfortable talking to her uh, even though she's the owner. And, you know, I'm building a connection with them and it's really something that she enjoys. Right. And so, and I bet, you know, you probably think, gosh, why haven't I been doing that or carving some time out of my day in the past, right. To be able to have that experience on a consistent basis. And I would imagine Cindy's probably making a commitment to her uh, business right now to do exactly that. Maybe drive the shuttle a couple times a week or I don't even have to be in the shuttle, but if I can have a place where I can bring folks in and meet with them and talk to them on a, you know, on a, on a neighbor to neighbor level, right. And really build that solid foundation uh, from a relationship perspective. Because again, I, I, we're all figuring it out now is that it takes a lot. It, it, you know, it takes a village, right. But when these, when these troubled times come and they're going to come, that's how you get through. You get through as a community. You get through through preparation. You get through through drilling in the best practices and adherence to those best practices. And like JR said, that means in the slowest time and the easiest going time and it's, you know, the dog days of summer and everybody just wants to be on the beach. Nope. That's when you, that's when you drill down, right? Matter of fact, in football, that's when you ran double practice, you know, double session practices because they know, you know, they want you to go out and be lazy. You got to work even harder in the slow periods of time. So Absolutely. Let me talk to, go ahead, Jer. Well, I, I was going to say one of the greatest quotes that I can remember from one of my coaches from drive was that he, he, uh, he used to say that uh, the greatest companies, they don't, they don't always measure, they not only measure the money they made, but they keep in track of the money that they could have made, but yeah. they didn't. Dang, that was, that's a, you know, that's a wise words right there that we could have made awesome. more, but we didn't. <laughs> now I'm thinking about how we can add some KPIs to the BCP. There you go. <laughs> well, what's the missed opportunity uh, KPI, right? If yeah. you would have sent this inspection, what would you have returned? That's interesting. Um, yeah, that's something to kick around because if anything, it just gives you, that's a great wake up, right? If that number's growing, that's probably an early indicator that you should probably get out there and tighten the screws a little bit on the process and run some drills and, and just do some, you know, spot audits and things like that, which are best practices to make sure that all of your protocols are being adhered to throughout the day and in the busy times and in the slow times so that you make sure you're kind of, you're bulletproof. Then when well, you and, this and, and also to your staff, right? Sorry. No, go for it, bro. Um, you know, if somebody doesn't want to do a great inspection, um, then move aside. Somebody else will do it. Um, if one of the writers don't want to make calls and don't want to get, do the, do, every, you know, just do the best they absolutely can. And with the tools that we have available, move aside, somebody else will do it. Uh, some of the shops that I see on the street that are closing at two, then they're giving us all the work to us, you know, move aside. Somebody else will do it. Like right now it's not, you know, it's, it's, we can't go to the couch and just watch, um, uh, what's the name, uh, the tiger King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joe exotic, Joe exotic, Joe you know, exotic. That's Carol Baskins. We, we need to forward our lines and do whatever or, or whatever it takes to to stay in business you know like it's it's not it's not joe exotic time man you know it's it's a big down that's right meth is not the answer 
<laughs> it's not going to get you through these issues. <laughs> Man, but I got to tell you, so, and, and that's where it really, I mean, the success, it just, it just sloughs off of you, JR. I got to tell you, you know, I want to, you know, I've been telling myself, I write it down on my calendar all the time. It's stop by and soak up some success on my way home passing JR's shop, right? Because it really, <laughs> it really does, man. You know, it's like, uh, I don't know, you can fall down into a hive of bees and you come out with jars of honey. And, uh, and that's all good, man. And, but you know why? Because it, it, like you said, it, it drives the performance of the folks around you. And you know what? I, like I said, I've known you a long time, GR, and, and you know, you are such, so empathetic, right? And so kind of gregarious with, with, with you know, and as part of your, um, you know, your experience in drive, right? Uh, you're out there. I mean, you've got a following, man. You're like a rock star. I remember out at the last drive conference, I was in, here comes JR in the room, and then here's this crowd of people behind him, right? Well, they're doing the same thing, man. They're picking up the, <laughs> the, the success vapors that are coming off of you. But, 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 to be, but to be, you know, serious, if I could do that for a second, I don't know. We'll see. How do you, I mean, talk to me a little bit about how important, A, that is, is that you're maintaining a community of your peers. And, 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 and then really, you know, for folks that are out there and thinking, you know, they want to get more involved and they want to collaborate more with people, because again, that's another side to it that really helps you in these types of, in, in these times. And, and it also probably influences you to make that hard decision. You know, do I want to go digital? Oh, the headache, the expense, my tech, but you know what, that, that community of folks like JR out there that have done it help to influence you to make that decision. And I bet you, if you looked back to and I, and I don't know who influenced you to come to auto vitals for a workshop, but I bet you were glad you made that trip. And, and, and can you imagine where you'd be if you hadn't made that change, you know, for gosh, going on five years ago, right? Oh yeah. Well, I think peers are super important. Um, as far as, are you talking peers in the shop or, or, or colleagues uh, in general, right? Just, you know, just other shop owners. How do you get connected into a network? How valuable is that to you? And, and kind of how was your introduction, uh, you know, to that? Got it. Well, um, I was a drive customer for some years and then I got, I got invited to a top 20 group and I've been in a top 20 group with uh, Mike Button and uh, Kevin Delaney and yeah, uh, a bunch awesome. of the good dudes that, you have you had in your podcast here and uh it's really invaluable because as an owner you there's only so much you can uh talk to to employees and you also need a person that has your same reality you know that 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 is going through what you're going through or has gone through what you're going through and a lot of times you know we get fired up it's like oh man i'm gonna make this change today and it helps to pick up the call, the phone and call somebody else. And the other guy's like, well, have you thought about this? Maybe this is going on. And I'm like, oh, crap, I didn't think about that. So it really grounds you to not to see things in a, in a perspective that somebody, you, otherwise you might have not seen it, right? Uh, that um, that um, just just another set of eyes that, that are, that are kind of looking from afar. That's, that's how I would see it, how peers are. And also to push each other. Um, you know, I, 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 I go to the, for a couple of years now, I've been kind of crossfitting and, uh, when, when, uh, when, you know, you got the weights and, and, and my body's like, or my mind is like, no, nah, man, that's heavy. I don't want to pick up the bar anymore, but it's, it's a 20 minute workout. And then your neighbor picks up the bar and you're like, well, shit, I can do it too. You know? And, <laughs> and, and, and at the shop is kind of the same, like, well, this guy's doing that. And well, I'm gonna do that. And like, this guy can do it. Then, then it gives you the, um, the will and, 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 and just the vision that, that it can be done. He's doing it. I'm going to do it too. And how did you do it? You know, all those things just to talk and to stay sane, especially yeah. nowadays. Yeah. I think it's really invaluable to have somebody you can pick up the call, pick up the phone and bounce ideas off yeah. um, and not make irrational decisions and also to make rational decisions. Right. It's like, am I thinking this? Am I right? And then, you know, <laughs> am I the crazy one? Right. No, but so yeah, that's, you know, and that's very important. Yeah, because that's a great point, right? Is, and so, and now, you know, it's funny because you started out and you were kind of the new and the lurker, right? You were just kind of, 
you know, in drive and then got involved in a 20 group. And now you're the leader of that, you know, and you got folks that are wanting to follow you. And then you've even expanded that because, you know, through like the Auto Vitals Facebook forum, it allows you to collaborate again with folks that are even outside of your individual 20 groups, broaden your horizon a little bit, learn a different, you know, uh, or at least be exposed to different, you know, opinions and thoughts and tactics and things like that, right? It's invaluable. Whether you throw half of it away and contemplate the other half, it doesn't matter. It's in your, you know, it's in your space, right? It's well, available as an opportunity for you. Success leaves clues. It leaves clues. So why wouldn't you just pick up the clues of the success of somebody else, right? It's, it's, it's a no brainer. It's like, it's like free money. <laughs> it's like free money. Yeah. My, you know, my granddaddy told me that a long time ago, right? You want to be successful, Tommy, you do what successful people do. That's it. That, right. If you make it down to that, then, then it really is. And get involved, right? Reach out to JR to shop concourse motors in Ventura, California, call them up, right? Get yeah. on the Facebook forum and ping them there and John and Devin and just, you know, Neil and Rod and Fred and I could go on forever. Right. Because those are, that's invaluable relationships. And, and again, that's the type of stuff and preparation, you know, we're all preppers now. We're all like doomsday preppers. Right. And you need that network. You need your, your, your troops, your, your army out there behind you uh, to, again, even if it's just to stay sane and, and stop yourself from, you know, lighting your hair on fire and doing drastic stuff, right? Uh, because other people are in that boat and we can moderate and we can get through it together. Larry Goff, hey, uh, before we break and we're going to bring in uh, Devin and John, uh, Larry Goff sent in a quote. He says he's heard you say it uh, plenty of times. It's a Tony Robbins uh, quote. If you want to take the island, you need to burn the boats. That's it. We landed on an unknown island and we need to look forward, not back. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> often, often, I'm, I'm, I'm a little the one of the wild ones in the group, and 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 I do things first sometimes, and and I move forward, and uh, and that's my quote. It's like, no, no, we're burning the boats, man. That's it. <laughs> you gotta burn the boats. <laughs> There's no going back. It's, it's you ain't getting forward. off this island. <laughs> and sometimes it's needed, right? To do that daring thing. Yeah. We gotta have that mentality. There's yeah. no way out. Only yeah. success. And it's commitment, right? It's commitment. Yeah saying you're committed. I'm so committed. I burnt the boats. I right? we leave until we're two ways in a body bag or we're going to get out of here successful. Right. Uh, that's hey, it. Shout out to Larry Goff. Thank you, Larry, for that. Yeah. Yeah, for He's sure. An awesome dude. Yes. He's in my group too. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So let's bring in uh, John Long and Devin Kelly. Um, you know, again, we're, I think we're going to end the Facebook live, but if you folks are only on Facebook live, you haven't joined us in the zoom room, get over to uh, autovitals.com slash DSTR. Uh, we got all kinds of folks in here, gosh, up to 60 people in here right now, and they're all chatting it up, so you're missing out if you ain't in here. Um, welcome, Devin and John. John, I, I love the background, buddy. I mean, John is a theme down to a science. He follows that theme. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Just wanted to have a little fun this week. Yeah, no, I, I love it. You, it seems like you have fun every day. And Always. Devin, where are you coming to us from? It looks like you're in... Uh, you're in Christopher's, uh, you know, to, to, to John's Eeyore and Tigger, you're in Christopher Robin's room there. Yeah, we've got the uh, nursery right here behind us. So <laughs> coming live from the nursery. It's keeping nursery it all, slash it office. Family. Keep hey, it Devin, when was your son born? Um, he was born on the 29th day of February. Leap, leap wow. year, baby. Wow. Congratulations, brother. Thank you. That is awesome he, stuff. He'd be in on the video, but I don't think he had a lot to contribute to that and really prepare him. So <laughs> give him <laughs> a year or two. That's a that's a future industry, that's a future automotive repair leader right there. Uh, let me just say future business leader because you know Devin's got a lot of irons in the fire. The guy's a genius. He's another guy you want to friend early and often on Facebook. Call him up, make friends, follow what he's doing because the guy's a rocket ship. Um, and that's why we have them on today, along with John. And uh, let's talk a little bit. Let's chop it up because both of you, you know, we had you on the show in the past, and both of you have really uh, thought outside of the box. I think initially committed to something, burnt the boats, like Jr. said, and then just made it happen. And it probably wasn't just all sunshine and roses, right? There was probably some rocky turns. There was probably some times when you said, "Man, what did I do? I should have listened to my twenty group." <laughs> <laughs> and, and had some second thoughts, but you persevered and 
uh, I think the results speak for themselves. So let me start out with you, John, is that, you know, we've had you in and we've talked a lot about specialization of roles and some of the changes that you've made in your operation uh, to adapt to the digital technology. How, you know, let me ask you this. Let me start you this. What was the what was the thing that made you make the change, right? What was it? Was it something that was bugging you, some, some challenge you couldn't overcome, or was it just a wide-eyed vision of opportunity out there in front of you that you, you were looking for a way to get there? Uh, no, we had a, a productivity issue out in our shop. Um, and I, for a long time, I just couldn't put the handle on it because, you know, we had cars there. We always had cars. You know, I had my advisors, they were running around, all day long, like a, you know, a chicken with their head cut off. Um, so we just had a productivity issue. And I mean, I went through three or four different things before I finally found um, the solution for us. It's not the solution for everybody, um, you know, but it was, you know, in creating that role of a production manager slash estimator. Um, that's kind of what changed it. And not only did it help our production issue in the shop, but it, it helped our advisors. So we're not burning our advisors out. Um, and it also helped them take our customer service to the next level. Um, you know, and that, that's what it's all about in, in all reality. It's just having that, you know, next level customer service. That's awesome. And hey, real quick, I want to introduce our founder and CIO, Uwe Kleinschmidt, has decided to come in from his COVID-free cubicle and practice some social distancing here with me. I mean, it's metric, right? Because he's from Europe. And so... The six feet, it's millimeters or some weird thing like that. And so I think we're legal. But uh, just in case, I've barricaded the door so the SWAT team can't come and, uh, and get us out of here. But uh, I want to follow up with you real quick, John, on that is to say you hit the nail on the head there. It's not for everybody, but it's for him, right? And it worked. And, and, and really part of what we're doing here through the Facebook forum, through the show, through anything, any the 20 groups that you guys are collaborating in is to get those ideas and test them out, right? try them out, think them through, see what it would look like. Maybe it's not for you, but you know what? Now you're still on your search or, or now you hit on something that's working and then you can improve or expand or change it and tweak it to make it work for you. And I think that's, you know, really important what you said, because a lot of folks hear these things and they go, what production manager, I don't have, you know, hundred cars a day. I'm not that size of shop. It's not about that. It's about really what it boiled down to what John said is it's about the customer service, right? And then, and then if you hit that nail on the head, the rest of it follows and pays off. And then, hey, you might be able to afford two of those production managers, right? Where you thought you couldn't even get one last week, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly it. You know, nothing is set in stone in our shop. You know, nothing is, is chiseled in stone. I mean, it's, we're always evolving. Um, and you have to evolve with, and change with the time, just like what we're doing now, just like what JR was saying earlier, you have to evolve and change. Um, other words, you can get stuck in a rut and you're going to be the shop that's closing at two o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. So Devin, same question to you. So your was a little different, right? As you bought a shop and we were in it, well, Auto Vitals was in it and you were kind of like, well, let me, let me dig around and figure this thing out and make a decision. Um, what, what influenced you? What influenced you to not only continue with the digital shop concept and, and, and technology, but then actually start to make changes in your operation to adapt and, and to improve. I think an underlying drive uh, behind me was the fact that my house, everything I own is on the line. <laughs> it's not just about me though. You know, those are, those are big factors that, that push me, but I was looking at a whole team of people who, basically just lost jobs in a way because owner left, yeah. this change of ownership was, was pretty important due to some timing things the, the previous owner was a really good shop owner, actually a mentor of mine, very sharp guy. There were some big challenges that created this changeover and um, it was a great opportunity. But what I saw was volatility that those, those team members and those customers had, and some of them may not have realized that was the case, but I knew that, that needed to be rescued and um, I need to make the most that I could of it for all of those people. So I, I feel like everybody involved was um, their security was on the line. So, and, and again, you know, my house and everything's on the line too. So, I mean, those were, those are of course factors, but I knew I needed a winning combination, a winning recipe of things. Um, I was hyper-focused on 
every aspect that I could going into it. I had notebooks full of notes and plans and thoughts and brainstorming. And it was a no brainer for me to still be a digital shop. I had heard of auto vitals for sure. I hadn't had much experience with it. So when it was already deeply embedded in the shop's processes, it was just a natural thought for me to hop on board with the education and figure out how to use it and maximize it. Cause I just, I already knew it was uh, an awesome digital inspection program. It was just a matter of learning it really quickly. I didn't want to pull the rug out from everybody, try to teach them a whole new program and things. Cause I could tell it was working. It just had a lot of room for improvement. And, and that's exactly what you made happen, right? Because I mean, you know, we've talked about it before, but your metrics, when you look at your metrics and yeah, you can see how they were using it before you came in. And it, I mean, it's just, it's just a rocket ship after that. And it's, and it carried through the entire year and it's still climbing, it's still growing. And so that, that really is, you know, a testament to say, you know, Hey, I can, I can have a toaster, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm not going to burn the toast. Right. And it's, it, you got the tool, but you have to find the best practices on how you use that tool. And, and, it, and it's not, there is no set to, to John's point. There is no A to Z instruction book. You're, you're building it as you go because it's what's going to work for you. And you have to get out there and a, be willing to take that, you know, risk, if you want to call it that, take that chance. And then be, be honest with, with yourself, commit to it and compare and, 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 and really track what is happening and be honest about it. Are we selling better? Yes. If not, well then why? And then what do we do to change and then incrementally improve and just stay in the saddle, just keep driving uh, through that change until it becomes a habit. And when it's a habit, I mean, it, it's just, it's night and day. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed by, you know, I have the house on the line, you know, that creates kind of an urgency you cannot escape. There is no pandemic, foreclosure, you don't need that right. type of motivation. <laughs> so, so my question would be, you know, when did you know it's going to work out? You know, how much risk can you take, so to speak? I suppose at no point have I ever fully allowed myself to feel like it's going to work out. And I think that's an important part of it. I took enough of a calculated risk to where I knew the probability of having success in different areas, but I've never allowed myself to fully feel like it's going to work out. I sort of wake up, I think every day with thoughts about if I don't put this into place or focus on this enough, I could lose it all. And I think the business of success has been this tangible example of my passion. Yeah. And um, I think I've always got more than what I can really leverage effectively. But I think um, that that's probably a big aspect is never really feeling like it's secure. No, I agree. You have to be driven. You have to go always constantly drive forward. Um, and you can't really look behind you, but you just got to constantly be driving forward. And that's a great point because, you know, if you're, if you're trying to get over this wall and you, you try to climb it, but it's slippery and there's no rope. And so then you try to go around, you try to go under, you try to go sideways, you try to go through it. You're going to find a path. And that's exactly what we're talking about here is just because the first path didn't get you to where you wanted to be doesn't mean there's not a whole bunch of paths. And some of them, you might have to start thinking about carving your own path, get the machete out and start beating the bushes. And that's kind of like what John and Devin and, and these, and these, and, and these folks that we're talking about, that's why we bring them on here because that's exactly what they do is they looked at a situation. They had a challenge. They looked at the tools they have. They thought outside of the box. They took a risk. They tried it. Hey, maybe it fails. Well, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to continue to tweak that because if I can believe and trust in the concept behind it. And for John, it was real simple. We, we want better customer service. I mean, you know, that's a really great shiny goal on the hill to go after. Right. And there's a lot of ways to get there and you just have to commit and stay and stay, you know, focused and motivated and take action every single day to get there and don't give up. Yeah. I've got a great, you know, point from Mark Roberts I want to bring in too. And he's saying, you know, he thinks that for the most part, most shops are understaffed because owners are focused on the bottom line returns of 15 to 20%. And that may or may not be the best for the overall long-term success of the business. And that's a really great point, right? Is that, 
you know, if we're, if we're always thinking about how do we cut the costs and how do it's all the numbers and, and, we, and we're going to, we're going to make the operation fit those numbers, those numbers, you might hit them, but you might not sustain those numbers. Whereas you might have a lower margin and grow to a point where then, you know, you can far exceed that on a consistent level and grow that team and that operation that you need. Uh, and so, and so maybe we're going to aim a little bit downfield a little and not be so short sighted and driven by, especially in these times where business is fluctuating so drastically. Can you imagine if you're trying to staff through it, what do you do when we come out of it and the floodgates open up, you're in big trouble and you just shot yourself in the foot. So, so John, let me ask you something, how through, so, so once you've made this change, right, once you've said, I, I'm going to do something like bring in a production manager, what are the critical success factors for you and how do you track those? How did you make sure that it was working for you uh, to keep doing it? Well, you know, you just got to look at your numbers. You know, we have certain KPIs we look at um, and tech productivity is one of them. We noticed our tech productivity uh, was going up just because, uh, the techs were getting the work to them dispatched and the tickets were getting writ written up quick enough, um, you know, versus before where they were sitting at the front counter forever, you know, waiting on their service advisors. And then also, you know, our customer service, our reviews uh, went through the roof. Um, you know, we've got almost 600 Google reviews at a 4.8 rating right now. And that just shot up ever since we made the change. Um, so, I mean, you just got to look at your numbers um, and, and make sure they're in line and, and you can see exactly when we made the change. And I think, you know, Uva before has even, you know, shown my data before and, and pinpoints the exact time we made the change. And you can see all of our metrics just kind of, you know, take off, take off like a rocket. So let me ask you something. Do you compare those metrics to other shops that are doing something similar? I mean, are you comparing, yeah, you're comparing your team against your team, but are you actually comparing your operation against others? Very little. Um, I do it just a little bit, but every shop is going to be different. You know, we're, you know, you're in a different area, you're in a different market, you have different your size. So, I mean, you got to kind of take those with a grain of salt and you can't focus on what somebody else is doing. You got to focus on what you can do and what your shop can do and how you can propel your shop forward. Um, yeah, you want to look at those a little bit, but like I said, don't focus on them. Don't get, beat yourself up saying, okay, this shop is doing X. I need to do X. No, you don't necessarily um, worry and focus on yourself. Did you have a clear sight as to where you would have pulled the plug? Right. Did you, did you say, Hey, if you know, it falls this percentage or this to this number, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out and rethink it. Uh, no, what I did is I went to my service advisors and I said, you know, because they didn't want to give up, you know, those things that I took away from them. You know, they're, they're like, every other supervisor, you know, service advisor out there, they're super men, super women. So they don't want to give up things. They want to handle it all and they want to do it all. You know, and I, so it took me some convincing to, to get, get that stuff away from them. I said, give me 30 days. Let's see how it works after 30 days. It wasn't but two or three days when I had an advisor come to me and said, man, this is, this is awesome. I, you know, I have finally have the time to talk to the customers that I need to yeah. talk to them on and, yeah. and devote to them. So, I mean, it, like I said, it, three days, two, two, three days is all it took. And then it, the rest is history from there. Wow. Yeah. Mark Roberts chatted in a, a really good, you know, uh, idea. And he said, you know, you should be taking some time to sit out in the waiting room and just take notes, right? How many calls are coming in? How long has that person been waiting since they walked through the door and it's really get that understanding and even get a chance to sit down and talk with what Cindy was saying earlier and really bond with that customer and get, get them to open up and give you insights that they probably wouldn't have given uh, except maybe in some negative Yelp review, you know, to be truly honest with you. And it's an eye-opening experience for you. I have a question of course. For, for all of them. Um, are you disciplined enough to set your goal and then, and then steer every day or every week towards that goal? Or are you flexibly changing that over time? Or what's your critical metric to say, okay, I have to change. I never had a point that I calculated would be the day that we would need to close down from a monetary standpoint. Otherwise, the, the contingency for me there is if we have to close down due to illness in the shop or something in that area. Uh, for me, I did have a pretty clear goal of working through this, staying open, 
and have just been pouring every bit of resources from all areas into making that be the case. It's something that's very real in my mind that it's going to happen. So I'm just pouring all my resources into doing that, except for if somebody in the shop does get sick and we need to isolate things like that, that would really be the only thing. And Devin, let me ask you something. So in this process, you know, and, and not, not just even in the COVID stuff, but, but throughout the process, because you had said something, you know, that, that was, that was really prescient is that when you came in and these in your in your crew that you kind of inherited they had just suffered a loss right and it was close to it was similar to they lost their job because of that change of ownership and and who knows what's going to happen how do you get or do you i guess i'll start there how do you get them uh involved in the feedback to improve and make those process changes that's a great question through shop meetings and through one-on-one -on -one meetings individually I counsel with them and I like to think that every single person, no matter what their position is or how long they've been in the company has gold in their thoughts. And it's my job to mine that gold. Mm -hmm. I, I have a, <laughs> a, a part-time shuttle driver in his first couple of days, I was asking him questions about procedural things and his opinion about what he's seeing because he's worked in dealerships. He's been alive a long time and nobody comes on my team if they're not a rock star anyways. So mm -hmm. I already know they're going to have great ideas or I never would have taken a chance on them. And so I'm asking a lot of questions about what they're seeing, what they're feeling, what it looks like to them. And it doesn't matter who they are, how long they've been there. I know they've got gold and I'm, I'm trying to mine it. Wow. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep them involved, keep them part of the team and then they'll be part of the team and, and, and they'll pull just as hard as you do. Sometimes yeah. They have, they have buy-in when they know I'm listening and they know mm -hmm. their perspective matters that will quickly earn you that buy-in. Yeah. And when they're part of the process, you know, that, uh, that only propels it even further is when, you know, they help develop your operating procedures as well. And not you just saying, Hey, do it this way, because I said so, you know, when, when you get them involved, like, like Devin is saying, they're going to, there's a bigger chance of them following those procedures and owning it. Yeah. I mean, it becomes like a family. I mean, you know, JR shop, same way, you know, I mean, um, you know, just, is everybody really that I've met. I mean, when you get to chance to meet their, their, their staff and their crew, it, it's just, it's amazing. It, 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 they're not, it's not like you're at work. It's like you're at some family reunion, you know, uh, it's how close that you're able to get together and, you know, families pull through anything. So let me ask you something. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's for everybody, right. Is probably because of this, you know, situation, you've probably uncovered some, power of auto vital software that you didn't know existed right and that's the ability really to operate your shop remotely right because a lot of you have been open but maybe staying home for whatever reasons kids are out of school no nobody to watch them or you know for whatever for whatever reasons um how let me ask you i'll start with you Devin. is have you done anything different or found anything new in auto vitals that's helping you uh, to, to maintain or even improve business operations through this, uh, through this downturn? Well, auto vitals workflow management capacity is so intricate and is so accessible remotely that it very much supports my ability to work remotely. I right before this webinar, I was in looking at, today's inspection reports, looking at how many pictures each technician took. And when I'm thinking about calling them for a one-on-one -on -one meeting over something, I'm looking at the workflow um, to see what they're doing right now so that I know who may be available for a call. And I just feel really in tune to what's happening in the shop. And it's just so easy to do remotely. It's just as if I'm sitting at a desk yeah. at the shop. It's yeah. brilliant. And it, it makes it it makes it very possible for me to continue things completely remotely. I, I'm not going to the shop at all. Um, my son was born the week they announced the pandemic and we were already isolating and keeping things clean because a newborn has a, a weak immune system. So we were already preparing that way. And when they announced the pandemic, I'm thinking, you know, I can't bring anything home. This is an opportunity for me to realize a goal I've had of being a remote operator and we're just going to put this into place. And so wow. the, the workflow management and other tools auto vitals have, uh, has, uh, has made that such an easy transition. That's incredible. JR, what about you, buddy? Anything different? I mean, have you, uh, have you noticed any, you know, hidden powers of auto vitals that you're now taking advantage of since the remote 
pandemic. Yes, yes. And, and I'll answer Hugo's question that he asked uh, five minutes ago about uh -huh. if you have the discipline to hit a target. And the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we were going to set something like, uh, we're going to do $40,000 a week, no matter what. And that takes an Olympic team. You know, that takes a level of commitment that I, it's, it's, it's pretty great. So my answer to you is, we have a minimum and uh, that's what we're gonna hit, but we don't have the, uh, uh, the goal and we're gonna stay here until we reach it. And that, uh, I don't, maybe <laughs> now with this pandemic, we have the goal of hitting the minimum, right? And that's a fact, but, uh, but that requires you to hit the most that we can. No, I think, I think that's an excellent question because that takes a, a level of commitment that from all your team that, uh, uh, you, you have to scatter the, at least the state of California to find that team, um, the level of commitment. Nevertheless, um, I do have a great team and we do great things. Um, now back to Tom, one of the things that I've done, we, you know, I, I have a crew of 25. Uh, Show us that wristband. Show us that wristband. <laughs> so success that, is my duty. Success is his duty. It's right there branded on him. Yeah. Got a tattoo, he just can't show it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Not like I wear it because now there's tough times, right? We got to make tough decisions. So we got to be extra critical of what our staff is doing, how money is being spent, what our marketing things are doing. So the days of like, oh, yeah, that piece is good enough, send it out. Or, yeah, that, that phone yeah. call sounded okay. It, 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 you know, you got to remind yourself, like, it's not good enough anymore. It's, it's, uh, it's got to be great every time on everything that we do. One of the things that I've done, we lost, uh, so I have a crew of 25. I lost three technicians that I uh, laid off. And um, so some of the shops are busier than others. So I've been using the, the uh, Auto Vitals page, the work in progress page to see which shop might need help. Like this guy doesn't have enough work in progress. So this one does. And I might be able to send a technician from this store to the next. Our stores are all within... Uh, you know, three miles of each other, so we can we can uh, uh, sublet technicians or helpers as I see on the on the on the page, and obviously they can call me, but I can almost see it before that happens. You know, that's that's, that's one of the great awesome. things. That you can yeah, do. like a utility player out there in right out in the field, right in between center and left. That's 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 interesting. Maybe that's something you may even continue because, you know, I mean, as successful as you are, as you start to get busy, you might, you know, even have some right. guy. No, absolutely. And it works well. <laughs> right. John, same question to you, buddy. Has there any, been anything process change, something you're working on, cooking up that you've, that, you, that is, has kind of materialized as an opportunity in front of you because of, you know, the changes to how we're running business during this time? Yeah. The, the only thing for me is, is we have so many processes and they're scattered on so many different platforms um, everywhere is I'm, I'm trying to just centralize everything uh, for our team. So everybody has one platform, they know exactly where to go. Uh, and, you know, and that's what I've just been spending time, you know, these past couple of weeks doing because um, you know, if, if they, if they're not in one place, no one's going to know where to look for it. You know, is it here? Is it there? Who knows? Um, so, you know, just trying to centralize everything on our processes, um, involving our team on trying to centralize some of those processes and write some more of them. You know, I've got a technician that's working on uh, some of our processes out in the shop with us, and he's doing a phenomenal job. Um, and it's just involving those, those people and trying to get that some of that stuff done. So, and I got a, I got an audience question from me. It's actually from the true host of the Digital Shop Talk, <laughs> Adam Benchik. And he's saying, you know, and this is kind of for everybody is putting it out there is to say that, you know, um, there he is. Oh yeah. Why don't you just go ahead and ask your question? Where is he? Was he on here? Oh, um, but he was saying, he's saying that, uh, we we've all experienced objections to things that we view are mission critical to perform. Right. Uh, when you've had that pushback or you didn't get the results you wanted, did you have to force your hand? and say, you know, you do it uh, this way, you know, my way or the highway, um, you know, with, with the team. 
That's have a, you ever got to a point where you felt like you had to force the the issue? That's a great question. I, it speaks to me because I've had some circumstances that fall into this category where I've needed to make some procedural changes that had to be done. And I had people that didn't agree. We notice during this pandemic, people are on different pages as far as what their perspective is, what's right, what's not, what's healthy, what's, healthy, what's not. And so that's a, that's a really big challenge right now in any of these big changes we make because of people coming from different political, religious, or whatever backgrounds. And so what I've been doing is when I encounter that bridge, I, I get with whoever I feel like is going to help me do the best critical thinking and try to create some workarounds. Um, an example being, um, I have a team member that would much prefer that we close down right now for a couple of weeks because we're so slow. And uh, that's not my preference. I know that's not most of the team's preference, but I'm working on finding ways of leveraging the payroll protection funds to create some flexibility so that we may have options where if people want to take off and have some paid days off within this eight week period, that can be available to everybody. And so if his big preference is to be home safe with family, he might be able to do that and not miss out. And the others may even be rewarded for staying. Um, so I'm just creating solutions to try to make it all work. You can't please everybody, but if you get creative enough, you can find some ways to make it all still flow. Roll with them punches, right? That's, that's, that's awesome. I, I haven't really been forcing hands because it's, it's a yeah. sensitive time. It's not really my personality. If I was to do that, it probably wouldn't be as effective as somebody else who was, who that was more true to their personality. So I just try to be true to who I am and, um, and, and just get really analytical like I do and find a solution. <laughs> right. Beat them up with logic. What about you, JR? Do you, do you, have you ever came to a point, you know, where you ready to uh, uh, just, you know, kick them to the curb and, and tell them, you know, it's, it's, it's this or the door? Well, I, I, I've always been a really nice guy, you know, uh, uh, very uh, – And humble. You know, I, I've always been down to earth, and, and I've been one of the guys, you know, I, I, I'm part of the team, and, 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 and I'm empathetic with everybody. But in this situation, if we don't keep rowing, the boat is going to sink. Yeah. So if you can't row, then stay home. Somebody else will do it. Um, Look at you, six toe. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, I uh, unfortunately I laid off uh, one service rider and two technicians out of my three stores, and they call me once a week saying like, "Hey boss, am I ready? You need me anywhere? What do you want me to do? Like I'm here." So when somebody doesn't want to make the calls or somebody doesn't want to make a good inspection, they're not only disrespecting me. Mm -hmm. But they're just respecting the rest of the team. They're disrespecting the way we do things. They're disrespecting you, America by making success your duty. You know, like, what the hell? Like, you don't want to succeed? Then get off the boat. Like, we got other players on the bench that want this. So I'm not a jerk. But at the same time, I got to see it that the rest of the team gets across the river. Yeah, you know? for sure. And you know, uh, Adam's got a little follow up and he's saying, Hey, you know, it's not even just about this pandemic time. It's in general, you know, do, do, do you, do you have to get to a point, you know, making these process changes that we've been talking about or implementing some new software or technology or something that just is more work or it's different. It's a headache and it's a challenge. And do you ever have to get to that point where you, you know, it's my way or the highway. What about you, John? Have, have you ever, is that how you run in the ship? Uh, to an extent, you you kind of have to, you know, it, it's, I go back to, you're either going to be on our bus or you're not going to be on our bus, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, you're exactly, you're going to get hit by the bus, <laughs> um, <laughs> the <street> bus. <laughs> you know, but, you know, you have to be empathetic about it and you have to explain the why behind why we're doing something a certain way and show them the numbers behind it. And if they're still not willing to get on the bus, then unfortunately, sometimes you have to make that tough decision and bring on somebody else that's going to be on the bus because, you know, there's plenty of people out there in the sea, uh, especially right now. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of other people, other shops that are, uh, you know, getting laid off um, so that, you know, we're only going to have a, you know, in my opinion, it's not going to be a technician shortage or a service advisor shortage that we're going to have here. It's going to be a boom for us, you know, for those shops that want to expand and want to move forward. And now's the time to, to start looking because there are going to be a lot of people out there on it. Hey, and Adam just wanted to, you know, side note, he just want to let you know he's asking for a friend. <laughs> I wanted to add one quick note on the end is just that 
when I've found somebody that's got this anomaly perspective or a perspective that's different from everybody else. And it would be that circumstance where I think maybe I just have to tell this person it's this way, you know, my way or the highway on this. I spend a little bit of extra time trying to understand where they're coming from and why, yes. because sometimes that tells me a lot of really important things that helps me help them gain perspective and, and gets their buy-in when they know I've taken the time to truly understand where they're coming from. Yeah, yeah that's a great point. Yeah, and it's all kind of relative, right? So if you're a new guy and you got some master techs in and, you know, you don't really have a lot of experience under your belt, so, eh, you know, maybe you got you to gotta be a little bit more diplomatic. But, you know what, if you've got a proven process and it's been, and it's been busting records for you, I mean, you're, you're standing on a pretty solid foundation and you're, yeah, this is the way we do it here. And if you don't like it, there's plenty of losers on the road, you know, pack up your junk and get on down there. You know, but going back to kind of what Devin was talking about is you, you, you have to ask them, okay, well, what do you suggest? What do you want to do differently? You know, maybe there is a different process to it. Maybe there's a different process that could be better. So I think you need yeah. to cross that bridge first before you throw them off the bus or run them over with the bus. <laughs> you got to go, hmm, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, like you said, and, and, and to Devin's point, it was a great point is that, you know, he, he hires rock stars. And, you know, you expect rock stars to sing, right? And, and so they're going to have experience and wisdom and ideas and insights that you don't have. And, you know, if you're higher into that level and if you value those folks to that level, well, then you should be paying attention to what they're saying and, and at least regularly taking the pulse and making sure that, you know, you're aligned in that fashion. Because, you know, and that's one of those things. It's, you know, it's kind of like a slow erosion of, of performance and morale if you don't right and and you know those impacts can really carry on through you know okay this person you know didn't work out we let them go but but the kind of the toxicity that gets left could impact even the new people you bring in to replace and it's one of those things it's almost like cancer you gotta you know really battle and run some chemo to get it out of your operations better not to catch it right and and that's exactly how you do that is that open door and that that clear communication those regular shop meetings where you're in there and you're having these discussions. And then, and then once we set the goal and we commit, well, now the expectation is that everybody's on board and we're all pulling for the same goal. The time for discussion is passed, right? We had that opportunity and either you didn't contribute or you couldn't vocalize or sell us on your ideas effectively. And so here we go and we're all committed. And now we expect you to run 120% at it because if you don't, if you're that prima donna, oh, I'm not my way. Well, then, you know, there's a lot, you know, it's better to, better to flush early, right? <laughs> it's help more, it's better for the neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> That's how Uba does it. One last piece I just had to add in. I, I, I couldn't leave this out is that if you've got that circumstance, something that helps me a lot where if you may have to just really push your hand is making sure you really understand that person's personality and their true reason for being at work every day. Cause if you're not speaking their language, they're never going to see the benefit of what you're talking about. So that additional time understanding each person's unique personality and how they need to communicate, it can make all the difference in the world to uh, having effective communication. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Yeah. And that, and that starts early and that's your culture, you know, uh, and it's really where that starts and it's, and it's, you know, having clear, um, expectations, clear goals, clear culture, and then get empowering that team to go out there and meet those goals each and every day. Uh, and you could tell, you know, if they're doing that or not. And to JR's point, you know, from earlier is every once in a while, set yourself up with a time, whether you put it on a calendar and set an alarm, or you just have a regular process where you go through and you audit it from top to bottom. Are we, are we as hungry today as we were, you know, last year, year before the day we opened? Um, are we taking full advantage of all of the opportunity coming our way? Are we thinking in terms of scalability and efficiency and productivity so that we can do more with the time we have? Because ultimately, if your goal is to succeed so that you can lead in your community, you know, in your business, provide help and opportunity for those around you, I mean, that's, that's a recipe. It's you know, how do you fail, right? How do you fail? Uh, and that's where, that's where, you know, everybody can get there. Everybody can follow the lead of folks like Devin and John and JR and everybody, you know, Adam and everybody who's, 
uh, in that Facebook forum, regulars on here in your 20 groups, you know, really just open up your, your heart and your mind to these ideas and try it, take a risk, you know, you know, Eeyore's a donkey, right? <laughs> so, you know, get out there and, 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 and just try it. Take that risk. Rely on your network. Rely on your peers and your friends. Rely on your team. Trust the team. That's why you hired them. And, and set a goal, a clear expectation, and then just go for it. Yeah, you might not win the first time. It might take you a lot of times of trial and error, you know, but take advantage of those folks that are around you that have been there and done that. Learn, you know, commit. And just keep driving because you're going to get there. And when you get there, I, I, you know, ask yourself, right, where I'm at with Auto Vitals in this digital shop, and it doesn't even have to be us. It's where I'm at since I've made this adaptation to the changing in the marketplace. Am I better off today or would I rather go back to the way I was doing it before, you know, as a postcard vendor, you know, just shooting out the postcards or spinning the signs on the sidewalk or whatever it was you were doing, try to get that business in. Are you better off today? And if you can answer yes to that, then why aren't you cranking the throttle, right? Why aren't you doing more? Um, and why aren't you collaborating with folks and giving them, sharing those ideas that have helped you to be successful and gleaning some information off of the, off of the things that have helped make them successful uh, so that you can leverage that and take advantage of it because, you know, it's not just going to benefit you. It's going to benefit all around you, including your community and this industry, right? It's because the things that we're sharing in here really help to propel us uh, and, and again, a success story after success story. It's like how we like to keep it, you know, is that, yeah, I'm down in car count, but I'm up in revenue. Hey, I'm down in this, but I'm not giving up. Yeah, I had to let some folks on layoff, but you know what? They're calling me every day and they want to come back to work and they're excited and they're helping and they're doing these things, right? Uh, and we're just going to get through it together in that fashion. And it's all right out there in front of you. You just have to avail yourself of it. Um, Dustin, what are we doing next week? I know we're long, but you know, hey, this was a, a, a really good panel. And I think that, uh, I think a lot of stuff that has been said here from a, you know, just from a operational perspective is going to help a lot of folks as they're in here trying to, you know, get through this time. Yeah, for sure. This is really good stuff, not only for right now, but, you know, looking ahead too, which is really, really the goal. So, um, and, and, you know, Tom, next week, we're going to build up something that you really teased early on in this episode, and that's, you know, increasing the value of your inspection. Your car counts lower, but, um, you know, rate, fix, close that gap a little bit by really squeezing everything you can out of the inspection. Um, and we're going to have Ryan Flatham back on, who was, um, he was on around Thanksgiving last year, but he's a really awesome guy. He came out to our, our workshop in Minneapolis last October, uh, totally changed his systems, went from like close to 0% uh, pictures edited, uh, increased that big time, saw a gigantic leap, and now he's got weekly auto vitals only meetings and and um, just kind of the process in his shop. So he's gonna be telling us about the why. We'll bring a couple other folks on to tell us about the how. And um, we're gonna have a really, really great show. Sounds like expensive. you drank the Kool-Aid. You uh -oh. drank the Russ Crosby Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And who knows, I'm sure Adam will join the show somehow because that's the thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll, be, I'll be here. <laughs> you can't have the show without yeah, John will host. be here too. John will be here too, you know, Jay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll just make it a big thing, so. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. So same time, same place, right? Bookmark it. If you're registered and you signed up on the, uh, you know, autovitals.com slash DSTR, you're getting, you know, notifications now. So you know when it starts. Get in here in the room, share your comments, share your thoughts and ideas. You know, gosh, jump on and we'll unmute you and, you know, uh, you take over the show and, you know, it might, you might be the new host like Adam is. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty hard to, to get Adam away from that. 